Okay. So now we get a water world. Onion ocean. Same amount of cogs there. Like ogres and onions, they have layers here. Is that what's happening? Kerbo's so happy. Okay. Well. <laughs> well. Gave you what flash? You were not expecting the fourth game? I'm not even quite familiar with what exactly that is. Like, it sounds faintly familiar. It might just be from me having, like, played Jackbox and there being Quiplash and stuff. But Whiplash, I'm not completely familiar with. But it's <laughs> stuff on the, uh, Switch because PS has a lot of censorship policies for its anime games. Uh, but <laughs> Nintendo doesn't, I guess, then? I, I did not know this. Hey, look at this! Wee Across we go! Sweet. Wait, not a game called Whiplash. Oh, gave you Whiplash. You're going to get Whiplash. Oh, I thought that was listed off the game. You're going to get Whiplash, Kirby, Octopath. Okay. That's why I thought that uh, was there. You know. Okay. Snow, ice, whatever. Same thing. Here in the land of Canada, it's basically the same thing anyway. <laughs> That's a okay there. Wee. Cross we go. I don't need that Kirby one up. I'm just going to go past that one. So much for grabbing them if I see them. I'm just gonna keep on moving here. But what's this? I'll see what this is. Oh, it's just a pit. It's just a pit. Okay. Let's keep on moving. Sure. There's rules on what can be on their consoles. Oddly more lax than PlayStation. That's interesting there. Because I know that, you know, Nintendo in regards to online is, you know, very good at, you know, keeping their environment like a very safe place for, you know, younger players. Like, if you're looking at any one of these consoles, you know, handle on online multiplayer games and, you know, the censorship there. Like, Nintendo's is probably going to be the best. You're least likely to find on a Nintendo console something in some video game that you can play online that's going to end up being, like, really offensive and messed up or anything like that, you know? But I guess in terms of what's on the eShop and what's being sold is a bit of a different matter. Whoa. Man, I don't, I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need it there. Like, sometimes some things do get through the, uh, through the cracks. Like, I think a few years ago, there was, like, some drama with Splatoon 2 where some young user <laughs> encountered a user-created message that said something like, uh, F Israel or something like that. And the kid was, you know, like, what the heck is this? And Nintendo had to issue an apology about that, and they had to reassure, like... Like, the parents were really upset about that. Like, what? This isn't a Nintendo game. And uh, Nintendo had to assure them, we, we didn't write that. That's a user-generated message. And we're surprised that it got through the cracks. We're going to, you know, try our best to make sure that stuff like that doesn't get through. And usually they are actually really good at that. Like, you know, it's not very often that you hear about something like that coming up in one of their uh, in one of their games. They're typically really good. Oh, that's the that's got to be that other new ability, right? Like, Nintendo's typically really good at that when it comes to, you know, the censorship within the actual games themselves. But I guess in terms of, uh, you know, what's available on their console, they're just like, yeah, you can put up whatever, I guess. And, you know, even on things like the eShop, I know that there are, you know, you can set things like parental controls and restrictions, you know. There's a lot of parental stuff that you can do with, uh, with the Nintendo Switch. Like, you can set play times for your, uh, for your kid right from your phone from the, uh, Nintendo app there, or, uh, you know, see what is they're playing and stuff, or restrict what they buy. Stuff like that. Which is why I'm sure that they're as lenient as they are to that, because I figure, you know, if, uh, some kids are not supposed to be playing games like that, then the parents will just set up that, uh, set up like that. Which, fun fact, um, because I have a Switch Online family group to, uh, you know, be able to save money on the Switch Online thing, or Bob, you can do a family group with up to eight people total. So I have a family group with eight people and we all just like split the cost of like the family group thing where Bob is what we do. Dang it. Um, but because I'm the, uh, uh oh, but because I'm the parent or like the family group leader, that means that I technically could have parental control off over everyone else in my group. Which means, if I wanted to set, like, the seven others in my, uh, family group, my other friendos there, to have, like, you know, a maximum of, like, ten minutes of play a day, I could, in theory, do that. You know? Funnily enough. I could just screw with people from that group, you know? Yeah, basically own eight accounts there. So, you know, that's pretty funny. You know, so we've worked out this deal, they have, you know, they're trusting me. <laughs> 
Is it correctly placed? So far, will it remain that way? Depends on how generous I feel, you know? <laughs> but that's technically a thing I can do. Because yeah, Nintendo is very good at, you know, giving a parent slash family group leaders the ability to restrict things however they like, essentially. Which is why I guess they're as lenient on, uh, you know, games like that on the Switch. I would imagine, if I had to guess. If I had to hazard a guess, I would assume that would be the reason, you know. And there probably wouldn't be that same level of a thing or bob on other consoles, most likely. <laughs> I'm surprised that worked. Um, that would be my guess, at least. But yeah, let's see here. Um, assume certain games don't show up your account says that you're under a specific age. Yeah, it's probably like that as well. Like, those that list certain games probably have to, you know, list the age rating for that game and stuff and, uh just not show certain games to uh, some audiences and stuff. Most likely, saw some Twitter posts about some suggestive Splatoon 3 posts, but otherwise, yeah, Nintendo Online is pretty squeaky clean. Yeah, there is some stuff that gets through the cracks. Like, it'd be hard to be able to get it perfectly when there's, you know, user-generated stuff like that. And there's, there's no way there's a manual review process for, like, every single post before it goes up. They would be able to do that. So the fact that it's as clean as Mash B, the fact that it's as clean as it is, is actually really impressive, you know? Like, I do have to get give them that. Nintendo does a lot of things wrong, but that's one of the things they definitely do right, you know? Gotta give them that, at least. They are very good at keeping their stuff pretty darn squeaky clean. You know? But yeah, Metro Prime Remastered overtook Breath of the Wild in the best sellers section, huh? I guess probably because it's a new release rather than something that's been out for a while, but still. That's still something to be proud of there. It's really cool that, like, the Switch has really seen, like, a comeback for the Metroid series, you know? You know, there's a lot of old series of Nintendos that, you know, seemed more or less abandoned, like they weren't going to be touched on in any significant way. There were some titles on the 3DS, like, uh, you know, Metroid Prime Federation Force, best game ever, for example. You know, got some attention with the uh, Metroid Prime 2 remake, but Metroid Prime 2 remake, Metroid 2 remake with Samus Returns, but, you know, that game didn't get a whole lot of attention because that game came out after the Switch had already been out. Like, it's a 3DS game that released after the Switch had already been out. So, you know, it was one of those 3DS games that didn't really get a whole lot of attention because of that. Um, even if it was, like, a true-to-form return to a Metroid. Um, oh, oh, crap. Um, but yeah, with the Switch with Metroid Dread and now Metroid Prime Remastered and them actually doing pretty well... You know, it really is cool. I'm like Metroid Prime 4 eventually on the way here. It really is cool to see Metroid making a comeback here because for a long time, it seemed like it would just be one of those series that goes more or less forgotten and doesn't get touched on. But they, uh, but I'm glad that Nintendo took the risk and we're like, yeah, we're going to try to bring back this. Uh, we're going to try to bring back this series and that it seems to be paying off. Like, that's really cool, you know, especially considering you know, Metroid is such an influential game series for, like, what it did in the, uh, in the earlier days there, how influential games like Super Metroid were, you know? Even Metroid Prime 1 being a super influential game, probably being, like, a, uh, really good example for, uh, 3D Metroidvanias in the future for handling progression. Like, even looking at things like Dark Souls, it makes you wonder, like, huh, in terms of, like, world design and progression here, how much, uh, how many little bits and pieces were taken from things like, a uh, you know, Super Metroid is probably the most influential 2D Metroid game, and Metroid Prime is the most influential 3D Metroid game, you know? They are definitely very important video games in, you know, the gaming industry, I would argue. In gaming's history, I would make that argument, so it's really cool to see such a influential series actually getting, like, some love and attention instead of just being something that's like, yeah, it had some big releases back when. That's a big influential stuff back then, but, you know, isn't really getting much attention anymore nowadays. It's actually making a comeback here, and it's cool to see. And I had never been into the uh, Metroid series for a long time. Like, I never really properly played it before. I wasn't sure if it was the kind of thing that I could get into. So, it was after Metroid Dread was announced, and because we do things on this channel in order, that I was like, oh, let's go through the, uh, let's go through the 2D Metroid games in order, and, uh... You know, they're not super long, so let's just play Metroid Zero Mission first. And, you know, if I like it, then we keep playing the games. And if I don't like it, then we can just have a playthrough of Metroid Zero Mission and that's it. And I don't continue. But I actually liked it. So we continued and we've now gone through the whole 2D series, most recent version of each of the five games at least. 
and now we're getting into things with the 3d series and i enjoyed my playthrough of metroid prime one i'm looking forward to trying this remaster because the remaster actually looks really good it, from what i've seen it actually seems like a good example of how to handle a remaster it's not something like super mario 3 all-stars legend of zelda skyward sword hd pokemon brilliant diamond shining pearl all these examples that are like ugh, gross like this actually seems like a good way of how to handle a remaster from what i've seen and i'm really looking forward to playing it later tonight you know i'm looking forward to trying it out but yeah so anyway i didn't really have much in terms of stakes in the metroid series for a long time because you know i hadn't really played titles from it before a metroid dread was announced i was like let's go through it in order because that's what we do but I actually really liked it. I consider myself a Metroid fan nowadays. I've enjoyed these video games. You know, a Metroid Prime later tonight and with the new controls. I'm going to probably like that, right? Nerf Tornado in this version, Sag. It was stronger in the original. Metroid Dread was basically the Fire Emblem Awakening for Metroid from what you can see. Yeah, it kind of feels like it. Like, it really was a resurgence. Like, the Metroid 2 remake on the 3DS could have been a resurgence but it just didn't get that much attention because as mentioned it came out during a time that the switch was already out so who's buying new games on their 3ds at that point when you know the switch is the new hip thing revolved there so that game didn't get a whole lot of attention i don't know how well it sold i never actually looked into that um but it was a good game i enjoyed it um it was a good remake um pew 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 the water there um but yeah, so that game could have potentially been like the resurgence for a Metroid if it had been released like maybe two years earlier or something like that. But, you know, being released when it was, it just couldn't really do that. But it was really cool to see that with a Metroid there, with Metroid Dread on the Switch, that it really was like a resurgence. Because Metroid is a thing that a lot of people have heard of from, you know, Smash Bros. There's there's a few game series in uh in smash bros that have characters that are more famous for being in smash bros than they are for like being in their own video games <laughs> like captain falcon with f-zero ice climbers rob pit i would argue like a kid icarus got a little bit of a resurgence with kid icarus uprising on the 3ds fantastic game um you know ness and lucas i would argue are more famous for being in smash bros than their own games there's another case there metroid was kind of on the cusp like metroid was you know big enough back one that it's like you know metroid was you know spark here that it probably wasn't you know as much of a case as like those other ones but considering it hadn't gotten much in the way of like a new major title for a long time it was starting to like move closer to that kind of position you know where it's like you know there aren't as many fans in the same or it's not going to be developing much in the way of new fans if they're not releasing new titles and you know it was starting to fade into that kind of status you know bit by bit but you know something that people are familiar with and metroid dread came out and people were like oh metroid um i i know this stuff from smash bros and uh and i heard great things about the metroid series the metroid fans of there are keep on saying that it's like super fantastic and stuff let's try it out people tried metroid dread and it's like wow that's a cool video game you know <laughs> and uh it it was really cool to see of course, there were some people that had never played a Metroid game before that saw Dread coming out and were like, it looks like an indie game. Why is this? Why is this full price? Like, man, this should be like 30 bucks or something. Maybe it doesn't look very good at all. People who have actually played Metroid games are like, what the hell are you talking about? You know, I really like Metroid Dread. You know, like the other 2D Metroid games, it wasn't a particularly long game, but you know, it was a, uh, I, I like Metroid Dread. That was a, uh, that was a good one. If I had to rate like my favorite 2D Metroid game, it would either be Dread or the remake of 2. It might actually be Dread. Favorite Metroid game at all. Like Prime was definitely up there. I really enjoyed Prime and I'm looking forward to playing the Prime Remaster later tonight. Like again, I'm in debate about whether to make it a full playthrough because you know, the game schedule is crazy enough here as is and we already played the original Metroid Prime one on the channel just last year. But I did actually really like Metroid Prime. Um, and you know it shouldn't be too long so i'm honestly leaning more towards doing a full playthrough than not okay i just want to destroy this one block there but yeah, i came very close to getting skyward sword hd because you like skyward sword back in the day i love skyward sword it's one of if not my favorite zelda game but i hate skyward sword hd it got done so dirty they just upscaled it into a 
into HD. Just increase the number of pixels without changing any of the textures. So it still uses like the same original Wii textures that look super gross. That, you know, looked fine on the Wii because it was designed with like 480p graphics in mind. But when you upscale it into HD without changing any of the textures, it's clear how gross they are. So I would argue that Skyward Sword HD actually has worse graphics than the original Skyward Sword just because these textures were never meant to be seen in HD and in HD it becomes evident how gross they are something that you would have never noticed in like the native 4 EP of the original game you know so like I will stand by my claim that Skyward Sword HD looks worse than the original game Metroid Prime Remastered from what I've seen like thus far I've basically just seen like trailers and I've tuned into uh Johnny streams of it Johto Johnny there um, due to that we hopped into Pokemon Scarlet and Violet a little bit with tuning in some of his streams It's looked really good. Hey, it's the it's the boot from uh, the Spongebob movie It's bigger boot or no, it's the uh, boot that Dennis had because it's a spiky one specifically is the case Yeah, look at this Boobity bop Ow, just let me boot around here and stuff but Yeah, things like Skyward Sword HD and uh, Mario 3D All-Stars are how not to handle remasters. Both of them were uh, were cases of just upscaling and not changing any of the textures at all. Exception to uh, Mario 64 where they changed like the portraits and stuff. Whoops. Where they actually improved the graphics of those, but pretty much everything else. You know, it's just the exact same, but scaled up and stuff. But yeah, let's see here. Remember the guy who made the original God of War play Metroid Dread for the first time and complained that it was poorly designed? And yeah, God of War, Metroid are definitely very different games there i should dread felt like eldering in the sense that a lot of the complaints are very silly i agree uh, remember people uh, see, remember seeing people go so far as for advocating pirating a metroid dread i remember seeing like some brief stuff about that what was that all about again i don't even remember there um which to everyone in chat also people watching on youtube do not pirate metroid dread purchase it with your own money because it's very good yes i agree i quite like that game it's a very good game there. And also, when it comes to, like, Metroid Prime there, I do a lot of, you know, emulation slash... Which I guess is technically piracy of old games that, you know, the company is literally not even selling anymore. Where it's like, the only way to buy it legitimately would be to, you know, go through secondhand sellers where the company doesn't even profit off of it anymore, you know? Like, if you bought the... Gosh dang it! But it's fine, because I can just exit out. Like, if you bought the original Metroid Prime, there's no way that, you know, Nintendo would be able to profit off of it anyway, because, you know, they don't exactly sell it anymore, you know? But I've long said around here that, you know, all these old games that I emulate and play, if they're just made available, I'll buy them. And, you know, evidently that's the case. Evidently, I'll buy them. You know, they made it available. I played it last year, emulated. I quite enjoyed it. They made it available. I bought it, you know? The only thing that I don't agree with is like the Nintendo Online kind of stuff there. Like their expansion pass thing or bobs with the Nintendo 64 and Game Boy Advance. I still kind of want to avoid that just because it's like I never actually own those games. It's like renting them. I never get to, you know, keep that thing or bob myself. I don't like that. That I can't really get behind. I'd rather own these games. But, you know, if they make the games available to me in a way that I could own and put on my shelf, I'll buy it. Evidently, that's what I did today, you know? So while I did, you know, emulate the original Metroid Prime, just because, you know, how else am I going to play it? There's no way to uh, buy it in a way that benefits the company anymore. So who is it harming? But I always say around here, if they just make the games available, I'll buy them. You know, <laughs> only reason I'm emulating is because it's not available in any other way. You know, I want to play the uh, play the original game and it's not available in any other way. But they made it available. I buy it. Plus, I really enjoyed the game, you know? I really quite liked Metroid Prime. So I'm really looking forward to playing uh, Remastered here later tonight. And we'll see how much I remember from my original playthrough, because it was like less than a year ago. I think it was like May last year that we played the original there. So we'll see how much I remember, and how much I can zoom through and try out like the new controls rather than the weird rail shooter like controls of the original where left stick was moving and aiming because that was before it was standard in the gaming industry to have, you know, right stick aim. You know, it was different times before that was the norm. There had been games with, you know, right stick aiming before that point. But, you know, it was like a weird niche thing that some games were doing at that point. It wasn't like the standard thing in the industry yet. But yeah, basically people, people were saying that it's always morally to correct to pirate Nintendo games, even when it's currently in sale, because Nintendo did something stupid again. <sighs> I mean, 
if you really really disagree with something about a particular game <laughs> like like that's kind of the way that is for me with a uh, skyward sword hd where it's like wow they they really just ported over the exact same game scaled up the graphics gave it some new controls that are kind of wonky and charged full price for it it's like i morally disagree with that that's pretty wonky there like it really seems like this is a good way to handle a remaster like actually adding new controls that make sense um actually not just increasing the number of pixels but actually you know reworking the textures and the models and stuff like that like samus in this from what i've seen of gameplay footage so far looks really good you know way better than you could get by just emulating and upscaling the graphics if you want to play skyward sword in the best graphics just download it on dolphin and download a community made texture pack and it will be better than what the company gives you with skyward sword hd like it'll look leagues better people have even made 4k texture packs for skyward sword as so you can strip get a better experience by doing that rather than the cheapo crap option the company gave you so cases like that where it's like the company only bothered to make you like the worst possible version of this that they could give you when you can straight up get a better experience through other means here then it's like i can see an argument for that but when they are releasing an actual best version buy that support it you know because you know oh there's just a little bit of plastic left here yeah there's still a little bit of plastic that i missed there um like when they actually put effort into it to make it a nice game absolutely support that that's the uh that's the way that i uh that i see that there but for the sake of you know cya cover your ass um i gotta you know clarify here that i do not condone piracy you know <laughs> for uh gotta cover my ass as a content creator you know is the case but you know if the company is charging full price for a worse version of the game then it's like and there's also cases like you know brilliant diamond shining pearl where it's like pokemon platinum is just straight up the better game it's like <sighs> i i got a comment on the bdsp essay earlier today where someone was saying that they were actually really grateful for bdsp because it was the game that was so bad that it broke them out of their funk of needing to play like every pokemon game when it comes out because they realized that they really could just play platinum and it would be the better game you know so you know if uh you know and again i don't condone piracy so you know if there's cases like that where there is an old better version don't pirate the new worst version just emulate like the old classic version that's better like skyward sword play the original wii version with like some community made texture packs if you want to play pokemon gen 4 play pokemon platinum it's the best experience that you can get because bdsp sucks bdsp still makes you angry same you know stuff like that and those are games that you know if you wanted to play the original anyway you literally can't buy it in a way that benefits the company anymore anyway since you know they're not being sold anymore you just have these like full priced arguably worse versions of the same game ah, i should not have gone for this no it's fine it's not one of the things that insta kills you so it's fine there but yeah let's see here get the metro primary master but bought the trilogy on the way you reached up a few months ago so have the same game twice it looks a little bit uh, it looks significantly better than d on the uh primary master trilogy and you actually get to use you know stick aiming controls with this version as opposed to the uh as opposed to the prime trilogy version where i don't really need that one up where you have to use emotion controls so you know if you're cool with motion controls it doesn't make much difference but you know if you want to play like modern shooter kind of controls of left stick move right stick aim then it has to be a, it has to be that is the case which you know thank goodness they included in that like it might be kind of weird getting used to when we play it later tonight just because i'm so used to the rail like movement of the original now but i'm sure i'll get used to it and i'll probably like it more than the rail like movement just because it gives you so much more options you know than uh the restricted rail like movement of the original but like i said i did originally get used to it but now i'm gonna have to break out of my being used to it and uh <laughs> learn the more standard gaming industry system nowadays but yeah do not buy do not pirate but preserve that's a good way to put it there is a difference yeah if the again if the company is not selling the game anymore or just handling it in a way where it's like you can only rent it not own it like is the case with you know nintendo's online thing where bobs then i see it as justified because it's like yeah you want to uh you want to own these thing where bobs you want to have you know your own save data and stuff i like uh i like that idea there 
you know, if they're not releasing it themselves, if they're not making it available on something like a virtual console like they were on the 3DS Wii U and it, I really wish that they were still doing the virtual console, but sadly they're not, um, then yeah. I, I never condone the piracy of, you know, new games, but you know, if it's something that, you know, isn't being sold anymore, it's a classic that should be preserved, then yeah, that's a good way to put it. But yeah, and let's, uh, let's see here. A uh, Platinum Remake in the BSP style would have sucked, but at least it would have been the best version. Yeah, at least you can make the argument there that, you know, this is the inherent best version of the game. But unfortunately with BSP, it's like, no, there is a better version that came out back in 2009. It's so dumb, you know? So that's a case where it's like, why would you ever even purchase or even pirate BSP when you can just play Pokemon Platinum, you know? Like, why would you? And of course, it's still sold like crazy, you know, but realistically, if you want the best experience of Gen 4, just play Platinum. But it also really goes to show like how much Moundo, it's apparently this guy's name, how much just releasing something and having marketing around it will get something to be sold, even if, you know, there's better alternatives, you know, is the, uh, is the case there. It finally gets people around to playing it. Like, for example, when, as we were saying earlier, when Metroid Dread was announced and coming out, that's what finally got me to play the older Metroid titles leading up to Dread, you know? I'm sure there's a lot of cases like that. Or, uh, you know, later in March, The Last of Us Part 1 is coming out on PC, the uh, remaster there. And I think that might be my excuse to finally play. It's been on my mental list for a long time, but it's like, hey, it's coming out, like, in this version. This will be, uh, this will be my excuse to finally play it. Like, that's just the case for a lot of people. It's a pretty natural kind of thing to happen. You know, it happens with me all the time with all kinds of games where, you know, they come like this one right now. You know, I never played this game before, but it had been on my mental list to play it one day. But now that they're releasing it on the Switch, it's like, oh, now I'll finally play it. I'm sure that was the case for a lot of people with Gen 4 Pokemon, where it's like, oh, it was on the mental list of I might play it one day. But, you know, now that it's coming out there, you know, I'll you, use this as my excuse to finally play it, you know? That's, you know, the natural case for a lot of people. But, you know, it's really crazy that cases like BDSP, there just is a better video game, better version of the same game that you can play. But, you know, because it's coming out in game marketing and is on this platform and stuff like that, you know, that's a lot of people's excuse to finally try it out. Because that's the way that is for a lot of people in a lot of games, which, like I said, you know, I have lots of experience in considering it's something that's happening with me right now. This version of the game. Yeah, let's just see here. Um, Gen 4 just serves infinitely better than a half ass remake that decided to be faithful just so it could ignore quality of life changes. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree there. Um, you were so disappointed for Scarlet and Violet because of Arceus shaking up the formula. Yeah, it would have been cool to see Arceus expanded on. You know, that become like the new norm. You know, uh, take what Arceus did and apply it onto mainline Pokemon. Nope. Oh, well, I guess I'm not getting that cog there. Better version that came out in 2007 is called Pokemon Diamond. Yeah, our. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, you know, you could make the argument there, or at least functional and don't crash when you use something as basic as catching a Pokemon. That That is fair. So you could argue that even the 2007 version is better there. BSP made you have mixed feelings on if they make a Gen 5 remake. On one hand, it'll be bad that if it sucks on the other, you're curious just about how bad it'll be. <laughs> still have the global release of FE1, but the DS remake, which was global, is still the best version. Yeah, cases like that where it's like... Hey, there's a, there's, I have Fire Emblem 1 on my Switch here, even when they did that weird, like, 30th anniversary limited release thing where Bob, I never even booted it up. Stupid timed releases. Um, darn you, Nintendo. Oh, gosh, dang it. You know, also, I should also say, like, following up on preservation, if it's something like, where would it even be here? It would have been, like, added forever ago. Where would it be? Would I be able to spot it here? Because I know I have it on my Switch here somewhere. There it is. If it's a case like this, if we're arguing about, like, preservation, where Nintendo is like, ah, this is available on this console, but only for a limited time. If you didn't buy it from us before this date, then sucks to suck, you'll never be able to buy it. You know, cases like that, you know, I would argue that if you're downloading it by other means from there, that that is more so in, seek in like, seeking preservation, you know? because they refuse to sell it. What do you expect? You know, is the, uh, is the case. Just keep making it available. <laughs> also find it interesting that that's on the Switch, but not, you know, the Shadow Dragon remake, <laughs> you know, 
the worst version of the same game. Nintendo seems to like doing that, don't they? Guess we're not getting that tomato. Nintendo seems to like releasing worse versions of the same games. Oh, Nintendo, why you, uh, why you do this? We. But yeah, ah! But yeah, I, uh, gosh dang it. 